Hello everyone, uh, this is Lukas Paul, uh, Manager of Scientific Affairs from Lexigen. We welcome you to this pre-conference webinar at the Complex Life of RNA virtual meeting. And with me is uh, Dr. Yvonne Goeppel, Research Scientist and Technical Product Manager at Lexigen, who will introduce you today and to, the, to Trapper, uh, the column-based universal method for the purification of functional small RNAs in 15 minutes. Hold on a second. We'll continue in a minute. Yeah, no, it works. Okay. So, um, Dr. Goebbel will introduce you um, to Lexogen and the standing of uh, Trapper in the product portfolio, and then also explain to you the technology behind the Trapper small RNA isolation. Uh, summarize then the features and the benefits, why you should do Trapper based small RNA sequencing. And uh, during the whole uh, presentation, you have uh, the opportunity to already um, think of uh, questions you want to ask after the, this presentation. And please text them to the chat uh, to uh, the, the participant called Q&A. So Q&A is actually um, the Lexogen uh, chat. And um, after this presentation, uh, we will have collected these uh, questions and uh, I will read them out uh, and uh, Yvonne will then answer to them. With this, I want to hand over and please continue. Thank you, Lucas, for the introduction. Um, as you already heard, my name is Yvonne and I'm an R&D scientist and uh, technical product manager at Lexigen. Today, it is my pleasure to introduce our company to you and to dive into the exciting world of small RNA isolation and analysis. As Lucas has already outlined, we will first go into the details of the technology and then cover the benefits that Trapper can offer you for your research projects. Lexogen uh, is a biotech company founded in Vienna, Austria in 2007. And we focus on developing technologies for complete transcriptome sequencing. The US branch was formed in 2014 to support sales and tech support within the US. All R&D services and manufacturing is located in Vienna, Austria, providing a sustainable locally company culture with an interdisciplinary multinational team. Lexogen employs a worldwide distributor network to offer our products, technical support and services to customers all around the world. Lexogen is a complete solution provider we offer full sample to sequencing service, including data analysis, for the highest convenience in RNA-seq. Simply send us your samples or your extracted RNA and we do the rest over here. One of our main aims is to provide customers with the know-how and personal support that they need to complete their experiments and obtain the highest quality results. Therefore, Lexogen offers expert technical support for every step of the process. This, of course, is offered for all our kits and data analysis solutions that cover every aspect of transcriptome sequencing. From sampling or in vivo labeling for time-resolved RNA-seq to RNA extraction solutions, cDNA synthesis and library preparation kits, to barcoding solutions, spike and controls for NGS workflows, down to non-expert data analysis solutions that allow our customers to ex explore their NGS result without being proficient in bioinformatics. Our full service includes sample preparation, RNA extraction and pre-processing, library preparation, sequencing and data analysis. Service is available for gene expression profiling using 3' mRNA-seq. We also offer whole transcriptome sequencing in form of total RNA-seq in combination with rRNA depletion or as whole transcriptome mRNA sequencing. Lexogen also provides small RNA sequencing service and time-resolved gene expression profiling that allows to identify nascent transcripts by metabolic labeling and can be used to assess transcript kinetics and turnover. Our expert technical support is available to every customer and can be used in every step of the way. Lexogen employs application scientists, field application scientists, and application scientists that are specialized in bioinformatics. 
Tech support is available to help you plan your experiments and can consult you on the sample type and input you need to use, the enrichment strategies that are best for you, the number of replicates required for your experimental needs, suitable controls, appropriate library preparation methods and multiplexing strategies, as well as sequencing depth and read mode recommendations. During sample preparation, you can turn to us for best practice sample preparation advice, troubleshooting, or even hands-on trainings, as well as on advice for automation. We do not provide sequencing machines ourselves, but our kits are developed to be fully compatible with market-leading sequencers. Our technical support team is happy to help you with the instruments that you can use for sequencing, provide you with loading recommendations, and is also there for troubleshooting. If you are unsure about how to analyze or interpret your sequencing results, we also offer data analysis support. We can give you advice on the results, can help you with the parameter settings for individual steps to obtain the optimal results, or help you evaluate spiking controls. We also offer trainings on data analysis tools, um, develop our own data analysis tools, and have non-expert solutions that we also provide support for. When we take a look at the RNA-seq pipeline, Lexogen is mainly involved in the sample prep and data analysis parts of the equation. Since we do not uh, produce the actual sequencing instrumentation, it is important to realize that our products are compatible with those sequencers. Taking a look at the Lexogen portfolio, and I know there's a lot going on on this slide, but I just want to point out um, to you all that we have um, or cover every aspect of the complete RNA-seq workflow. Lexogen is a very innovative and fast-paced company, which is also reflected by the new additions to our portfolio. As you can see here, all the products that are marked new are new releases from this year. From the metabolic labeling kits that are applied to living cells or organisms prior to RNA extraction, we offer various RNA extraction kits and kits for pre-processing. Our NGS library prep kits cover the QuantSeq family kits that are designed for fast and easy expression profiling. And we now also offer a version that includes sample barcoding and early pooling and allows upscaling to thousands of samples for high throughput gene expression screens. This version is called QuantSeq Pool and was released just a month ago. Lexogen also offers whole transcriptome library preps and small RNA library preps. And we will dive into the details of the Trapper small RNA isolation and small RNA sequencing in just the few next slides. Our non-expert data analysis solutions are offered for the QuantSeq product line for gene expression profiling and for coral whole transcriptome RNA-seq. We also offer full-length cDNA kits that can be used to generate cDNA for long, long read sequencing experiments and spike in RNA variant controls, our SERFs. These are universal controls um, for all RNA-seq platforms. SERFs mimic the transcriptome complexity, including transcript concentration range, isoform complexity, and as of this year, also length complexity with surf controls covering now up to 12 KB in length. Last but not least, all the 12 nucleotide unique dual indexing sets are the most sophisticated index sets for Illumina sequencing on the market. These indices are 12 nucleotides long and they are intricately designed with an optimized inter-index inter distance that is the basis for their superior error correction capacity. Using these indices, you can rescue millions of misassigned reads and make the most out of your sequencing experiments. So with no further ado, we will now turn to Trapper and the new beautiful world of small RNA extraction. But first of all, why small RNA analysis? 
Regulatory small RNAs play an essential role in mRNA turnover, translational regulation, chromatin compaction, and are thus important regulators of gene expression. They are involved in regulatory pathways and play an important role in disease and development. Small RNAs are involved in virtually all processes and their reg regulatory output impacts all RNA-seq experiments. Even if you're not directly looking for it, small RNAs are directing at least a part of the changes in gene expression that you are commonly assessing in your expression profiling analysis. As small RNAs are known to be involved in cancer development and progression, they are important biomarkers to detect and monitor disease progression or to follow the results of treatment. But apart from being indicators for disease, small RNAs can also be targeted directly to fight an illness. Small regulatory RNAs are generally defined as RNAs that are shorter than 200 nucleotides. And as such, small RNAs are universal and can be found in all domains of life. In eukaryotes, most of the functional groups of small RNAs are a lot shorter than 200 nucleotides with microRNAs, siRNAs and piRNAs in the range of typically 21 to 29 nucleotides as the most famous members of this group. However, the short size poses quite a few challenges for small RNA isolation and analysis using conventional methodologies. Most of you will be familiar with the current methods listed here. These are the most well known for small RNA extraction. The most common method uh, is commercial small RNA extraction kits. These are very similar in components and protocol to all RNA extraction kits. They rely on a series of buffers to prep the RNA, to bind and wash them and elute them from silica filter coatings. These methods are cheap, fast and easy, but they are neither sensitive nor specific for small RNA. All small RNAs below 200 nucleotides are purified, including various degradation products tRNAs, rRNAs, or mRNA fragments that often make following small RNA analysis quite tedious. A common improvement to this method is size selection based on gel extraction. It can improve the specificity by allowing you to extract RNA that is generally in the size range of the RNAs of interest, but still degradation products within this size range are also extracted. While this is still a comparatively cheap method, it lowers the yield dramatically and is extraordinarily tedious. It requires hours of processing time. If you wish to increase your specificity even further, small RNA extraction and gel extraction can then be followed by custom rRNA depletion. This is not universal. Um, you normally require custom rRNA depletion probes that are specific to your organism and your yield will be even lower. Potentially also the sensitivity will be reduced and the process takes about two to three days, which is the most tedious of the methods shown here. Now, while all these methods have some severe drawbacks, Trapper allows to isolate functional small RNA complexes specifically within the matter of minutes. But what exactly is Trapper? Trapper is the abbreviation for Trans Kingdom Rapid Affordable Purification of Risks. Trapper is universally applicable. It is faster than any comparable method. It is affordable. You only need one column per prep. And as these are microspin columns, you also do not require any specialized equipment like large gel extraction apparatuses, high voltage power packs, and so on. A simple benchtop centrifuge is all that is required. And the trapper method isolates RNA-inducing silencing complexes, the so-called risks. Trapper technology was developed by a team of researchers at the ETH Zurich, and the message was recently published in NAR by Grenzinger et al. 
The data you will see here today was generated during extensive benchmarking of the Trapper technology. Risks are RNA-induced silencing complexes, the key components of which are argonaut family proteins, short argos, um, which specifically bind their small RNA counterparts. Risks act in RNA interference pathways to regulate gene expression, whereby the small RNA confers specificity by guiding the risk to the target RNA via complementary seed phase pairing, and the protein component, the ego, silences the targeted RNA. This silencing can occur by various mechanisms, mRNA cleavage being the most common one, but also translational repression or transcriptional interference are possible. Thus, functional physiologically relevant small RNAs associate with WISCs and are active in RNA interference pathways. Ego family proteins are highly conserved in eukaryotes, and also some prokaryotes, mainly archaea, possess ego-like proteins. Even though ego proteins and small RNAs are quite universal, the ego repertoire between organisms varies a lot. For instance, Drosophila possesses five ego family proteins, humans eight, and C. elegans even possesses 27. And each species possesses a unique composition of egos from different families and subclasses. Classical ego-specific methods like co-immunoprecipitation that also yields functional small RNAs therefore requires detailed knowledge of the sample's ego composition. These methods require either epitope tagging of all ego proteins within an organism, or they require specific antibodies for each of the ego types of a given organism so that they are very specific, but they're not universal. Trapper exploits the conserved property of risks, and therefore it can isolate native risks from all organisms. Trapper thus enables research on uncharacterized organisms. It can also facilitate the discovery of novel small RNAs, as Trapper purified small RNAs were complex with the ego protein in vivo, and therefore you can predict with high confidence that a new unknown small RNA that pops up in your data really has a functional role in the cell. The same is true for functional small RNA isoforms. These either contain SNPs or possess different start and end sites, and it is often hard to judge whether these isoforms are indeed functional. With Trapper, you, have, you can add confidence to this observation. Last but not least, Trapper allows to assess regulatory tRNA halves. These have been recently recognized as potent regulators of gene expression, but also here, judging if a tRNA fragment indeed has a functional role is difficult, as most of the undesired degradation products that you find in your small RNA-seq data largely correspond to fragmented tRNA. So this is like looking for a needle in a haystack, and previously only laborious ego co-immunoprecipitation could help to shed light on this. But now to the Trapper technology. Isolating small RNAs with Trapper is quite easy. You simply lyse uh, your cells or tissues or dissolve your liquid sample in Trapper lysis buffer. You end up with the lysis of free RNA, DNA, proteins, and protein nucleic acid complexes, such as the native risks. The lysid is then passed through a ready-to-use trapper column. The column works by a principle of ion exchange chromatography and retains free nucleic acids while risks pass the columns and are eluted in the risk fraction. The elution fraction is thus enriched in risks, and this fraction can be analyzed directly. For example, you can analyze the specific argoproteins by Western blotting. Or you can extract from the risk for, uh, the enriched RNAs, and those small RNAs are then um, ready to use for either targeted analysis 
In case you are interested in specific small RNAs, you can perform northern blots. Alternatively, small RNAs can also be analyzed on a global scale, for example, by RNA sequencing. So within 15 minutes, Trapper can isolate the negative risk complexes from your sample. In one more hour, functional small RNAs can be isolated from this risk fraction. And you do not need any specialized equipment. The procedure is gel-free, it is easy to handle, and the extracted RNA is directly suitable for NGS library preps and other challenging small RNA applications. Now we will have a look uh, at the performance for Trapper. Trapper was used on a variety of organisms to extract small RNAs. The gel shown here is an autoradiograph for Trapper uh, on paramecium. The RNA was extracted from the input loaded onto the Trapper column. This is marked with an I in the first plane, or from the Trapper elution fraction marked E in the second lane, and from the fraction that is retained on the column, marked R in the last lane. The extracted RNA was radio-labeled and run on a denaturing gel to be separated by size. There is no signal in the range between 20 to 30 nucleotides visible for the input fraction. This is because the larger RNAs make up the majority of RNA in this fraction, masking the small RNA fraction to the point that it becomes virtually invisible. Upon removal of the bulk RNA on the trapper column, the small RNA fraction becomes enriched in the elevate and is now clearly visible as a strong band migrating in the expected range between 20 and 30 nucleotides. No band that would correspond to the small RNA is visible in the fraction retained on the column, emphasizing that the small RNA fraction is eluded completely and the fraction that is retained on the columns consists of the larger undesired RNA. The same analysis was done on various other species, including plants, yeasts, C. elegans, and mammals, which is here shown for mouse tissue. As you can see, for each species, the characteristic signals become visible in the size range expected for small RNAs. The varying sizes indicate different classes of small RNAs and the differences in signal strength reflect the small RNA content of the respective tissue or input used. But do these signals really correspond to functional small RNAs? To assess this question, the experiment was repeated on Arabidopsis samples. The auto radiograph of the gel for the trapper purification is shown here on the left. Again, uh, you can see the input, the elution fraction, and the fraction retained on the column. And you can appreciate again the two bands that would correspond to ex the expected sizes for SI RNA and microRNAs in the elution fraction. The extracted RNA from all fraction was then subjected to low molecular weight northern blotting using specific probes against uh, known small RNAs. The results of the northern blot is now shown on the right. Again, all three fractions are loaded that were analyzed in the previous experiment. The upper panel is an ethidium bromide stained loading control and you can see the bands corresponding to our RNA in the input fraction and in the fraction retained on the column. No rRNA is present in the elution fraction. The second panel shows the northern blot for U6 RNA, a roughly 100 nucleotide long RNA involved in splicing, which is not associated with AGO. As expected, it can be detected in the input and in the fraction retained on the column, but not in the trapper elution fraction. The following panels show uh, blots using probes against known microRNAs and TASI RNAs. TASI RNAs are transacting as I RNAs that are common in Arabidopsis. And for all tested small RNAs, the signals are specifically detected in the input and in the elution fraction, but not in the fraction retained on the column. 
again illustrating that functional small RNAs are specifically eluted during trapper purification. Thus, trapper reliably isolates known small RNAs. Further, small RNAs are also enriched by trapper isolation. For instance, if you focus on task three, it is hardly visible in the input fraction, but the signal becomes quite clear in the elution fraction. Therefore, trapper isolation is also perfectly suited for targeted small RNA analysis, and it can be used to assess small RNAs that require enrichment because their levels are too low to be assessed directly after extraction from whole cell lysis. The trapper method can therefore be ap applied universally to all species that possess risk-mediated RNAi pathways. Trapper is applicable across kingdoms. It can reliably isolate known RNAs without any a priori knowledge of the sample type. It is suitable for target small RNA analysis and also for small RNA sequencing, which we will focus on in the next slides. This plot shows the length distribution and biotype assignment of map treats from a typical sRNA-seq experiment that is done using a conventional sRNA workflow. In that case, total RNA is extracted, for instance, with trisole extraction, and small RNA library preps are performed using total RNA as input. The prep inherently prevents large RNA to be ligated and amplified efficiently, therefore leading to libraries with short RNA inserts. However, there's no discrimination between desired small RNAs and slightly larger degradation product. And most of the reads obtained from a sequencing experiment correspond to degradation products of rRNA and tRNA, which is shown here in gray. Only a minor fraction corresponds to the desired microRNA and siRNA fraction, as seen in the blot. This is roughly 15 to 20 percent of all reads only. Lengthy size selection procedures like gel extraction of the small RNAs prior to um, the library prep actually reduce the contaminating RNA species, mostly tRNA and, and rRNA. And as a result, more sequencing space is available for the desired small RNA fraction. However, these methods are quite tedious and they increase the overall workflow time dramatically in some cases up to eight hours. Trapper isolation focuses the sequencing reads also on the desired microRNA and siRNA fraction, and it only takes 15 minutes prior to the RNA extraction. As RNA extraction is required for all of these methods in every single workflow, this is hardly any time at all. In addition, Trapper isolates functional small RNAs whereas gel extraction not only takes much longer, but is also purely based on size and does not discriminate between functional and non-functional small RNAs. Trapper thus increases the data quality by fo focusing the reads on functional small RNAs. This saves valuable sequencing space and you can multiplex between three to four times more libraries in a single sequencing run and you would obtain the same number of reads as you would for a conventional small RNA-seq workflow. Trapper is also faster, easier, and more reliable than conventional small RNA size selection methods and adds the benefit of isolating functional small RNAs. Working with notoriously difficult degradation-prone samples provides the challenges even to highly experienced researchers. RNA degradation during sample processing usually leads to a decrease in data quality as more degradation fragments for other RNA species are then used as substrate for the small RNA library generation. The result is an increase in undesired reads in the sequencing experiment. In our experiment here, RNA degradation during sample preparation was mimicked by incubating murine liver lysids with RNAs during extraction. 
The extracted sRNA was then used in small RNA library preps and sequenced. And as you can see from the length distribution biotap plot, most of the reads correspond to RNA degradation products that take up most of the sequencing space. When compared to data obtained from libraries with high quality intact RNA, shown in the top panel, the fraction of reads mapping to microRNAs is dramatically decreased. You can see this as the green bars. Size selection by gel extraction does not solve this problem, as the size of the degradation product is very close to the size range that is extracted, and most, most of the time, you will have carryover of uh, degradation products in any case. The underlying principle of the Trapper method isolates functional risks. As the risks are in a native state, the protein component, especially the ego protein itself, protects the small RNA from RNA degradation. Therefore, Trapper isolation generates nearly identical pro profiles for intact high quality RNA and for degraded samples. Small RNA correlation analysis was performed between all conditions, and the R-square values are shown between the panels. When cross-comparing extractions from preserving and degrading conditions, you can see that very high correlations for small RNA read counts are obtained for trapper isolated RNA, whereas the correlation for the intact and degraded sample for conventional workflows is much reduced. Trapper small RNA isolation therefore performs reliably also with challenging sample types and generates high quality small RNA preparation by protecting the RNA from in prep degradation. Another set of benchmarking experiments was done on Drosophila melanogaster. Drosophila is a model organism used for studying the silencing of transposable elements in the germline by pi RNAs and PV proteins. Transposon silencing in the germline is a prerequisite for fertility and reproduction. And the presence of the 30 nucleotide long 2S rRNA complicates the study of Drosophila small RNA immensely, as this is very close to the size of the desired pi RNA as I RNA class, which ranges from 23 to 29 nucleotides. And even with custom rRNA depletion, a significant amount of 2S reads remain. In this length distribution biotype plot, you can see that after size extraction, by gel extraction and ribodepletion, still is a significant percentage of reads roughly 15% corresponds to rRNA, here shown in orange. 2S is by far the most prominent species. Oxidation can be used in addition to rRNA depletion to efficiently remove the contaminating uh, rRNA fragments and the 2S rRNA. And this is commonly used when studying Drosophila small RNAs. However, oxidation also eliminates the majority of microRNAs as these lack the protective 2O methyl modification. MicroRNAs, however, are especially useful to provide a means for normalization that allows to compare the pi RNA fraction between two samples. So it is desirable to maintain the microRNA composition of the sample as well. Trapper isolation is also useful for directly assessing all Drosophila small RNAs, as it efficiently removes all undesired small RNAs by maintaining the full microRNA profile. It thus saves researchers days of work and improves the data quality. Trapper allows simultaneously analysis of pi RNAs and microRNAs without wasting reads on rRNA in a time and cost efficient manner. Trapper also performs robustly over a wide range of input amounts. Nearly identical profiles are obtained from small RNA seq experiments from Trapper isolated small RNAs from Drosophila ovaries regardless if 
50 or only two ovo pairs were used as input for trucker. In both cases, the 2S rRNA is efficiently removed. The correlation plot on the right shows near perfect correlation for the pi RNAs, shown in blue, and the microRNAs, shown in green, under both conditions and is independent of the input amount. So now that we touched on the input range, I would like to point you all to another feature of Trapper, and that is the exceptional increase in sensitivity that this method has to offer. We will switch organisms again and come back to mammals, or more spe specifically, mammalian plasma. Plasma-derived small RNAs are important biomarkers and of special interest for various biomedical applications diagnostics, drug treatment monitoring, and, or similar. Plasma can also be easily obtained repeatedly and is minimally invasive. However, the analysis of small RNAs from mammalian plasma samples poses specific challenges. Small RNAs are lowly abundant and tricky to isolate. Pervasive degradation is a common problem when working with blood or plasma samples. Further, even slight alteration in sample processing and handling steps can influence the results significantly and lead to inconsistency. The lack of reproducibility and accuracy across sites is a well-known challenge for working with blood-borne small RNA or biomarkers. Chopper also provides a solution for these challenges as the procedure enriches small RNA and removes degradation products, as we have seen in the previous experiments. This plot shows the typical picture of a conventional small RNA-seq experiment for small RNAs derived from murine plasma. Also here, the majority of reads corresponds to RNA degradation fragments, and the microRNA fraction only makes up 5 to 10 percent of all reads. Again, in this setup, size selection via gel extraction cannot really be used um, to efficiently remove the contaminants as they are close in size. And as it's also associated with a lot of losses in material, it is usually not used on samples that naturally contain extremely low amounts of small RNAs. Trapper is suitable for isolation of small RNAs from plasma samples. Also from this difficult sample type, small RNAs can be efficiently enriched and contaminating undesired RNAs and degradation product can be removed, focusing the reads on what really matters, as you can see for the trupper purification on the right. Trupper small RNA isolation thus enriches small RNAs from minute amounts present in plasma samples and increases the number of usable reads by at least one order of magnitude. This box plot shows the read count dispersion for microRNAs grouped by abundance quartiles from lowest to highest abundant microRNAs, as determined by small RNA sequencing. So this is, in a way, an indication of the signal-to-noise ratio for small RNAs that are lowly abundant. Dispersions for conventional small RNA workflows, here small RNA libraries were prepared from total RNA after trisole extraction, are shown in gray. Dispersions for trapper-based small RNA libraries are shown in green. And while both methods perform quite well for the 50% highly abundant small RNAs, trapper consistently shows lower dispersion levels especially for the very low abundant small RNAs. Statistic analysis was here done with the Wilcox rank sum test, and it shows that it's really significantly lower uh, in dispersion for the low abundance quarter. Therefore, Trapper reduces the read count dispersion, particularly for the lowly abundant microRNAs, resulting in more precise quantification of this elusive fraction. Therefore, Trapper is highly suited for biomarker applications and can be used to enrich small RNAs from samples notoriously low in small RNA content, such as plasma. 
And with this, we're already summarizing the features and benefits for dropper-based small RNA sequencing. From all we have seen today, Trapper really is the Swiss army knife of small RNA research. It is universally applicable and specifically isolates functional small RNAs. It is highly robust and can also be used with difficult and degradation prone material while still being a fast and easy protocol. In just a few steps, small RNAs are isolated and enriched increasing the sensitivity even for samples with very low small RNA content. The time efficient workflow makes Trapper also very affordable. Therefore, Trapper has the potential to become the new gold standard for small RNA studies. Trapper solves many challenges that are routinely faced uh, by researchers and improves small RNA sequence research significantly by providing a new level of robustness and reproducibility. In summary, Trapper allows you to isolate only physically relevant small RNAs from risks, focusing the reads on what matters, using one workflow for all tissues, biofluids, or eukaryotic species of interest while skipping tedious and time-consuming methods like gel extraction or RNA depletion. And it allows you to perform an entire RNA extraction, small RNA isolation, and small RNA library prep workflow in just one single day. Trapper combines the fast and easy handling with high specificity for functional small RNAs. It is as fast as common extraction kits, and it's super easy, so even unexperienced users can do it. It is robust against RNA degradation during the process, and it's universal for all species. It is specific for functional small RNAs, and it is also sensitive so that small RNAs can even be isolated from material with very low sRNA content. Here we have the time-saving quality of Trapper visualized. There are two general routes for small RNA isolation. One is based on functional enrichment, the other is based on size. For enrichment of functional small RNAs, only agro-co-immunoprecipitation res delivers results that are similar to Trapper. Apart from requiring specific antibodies for each agoprotein to be analyzed, the co-IP takes almost 10 hours. In many labs, this means you have a two-day workflow before you get your small RNA library preps done. Gel extraction and rRNA depletion are even worse in terms of time consumption. You may need two to three or even four days until you can prepare your small RNA libraries and start sequencing. Small RNA extraction using conventional spin columns is technically fast, but it does not exclude the unspecific degradation products. So any time that is saved here during the extraction will be spent later on filtering out the degradation products in your sequencing data. So Trapper offers a significant advantage in terms of time savings over any other um, method that was shown here. Additionally, Trapper isolation allows to focus the reads on what really matters. Compared to conventional sRNA-seq workflows uh, that only yield about 40% of usable reads, the rest being degradation products, tRNA, rRNA fragments, and mRNA fragments, Trapper allows you to sequence small RNAs deeper or to increase the multiplexing capacity per run. Therefore, Trapper efficiently saves per sample costs for RNA sequence. This depiction here shows you the investigation into low abundant or unknown small RNAs. If you want to sequence your small RNAs, you need about 4 million functional reads per sample. 
And thus, for Tropper, these 4 million reads would suffice, whereas for conventional RNA-seq library preps, you would need roughly 10 million reads per sample, and this increases your sequencing costs dramatically. With this, I would like to finish, and I hope I could convince you that Tropper offers exceptional qualities that might revolutionize the field of small RNA research. But before we continue with the question session, I have one more exciting piece of news to share with you. Coming to your labs this fall is one of our new product releases. If you are interested in single cell sequencing or ultra low input, we really have something for you here. How would you feel about detecting twice as many genes as with your previous methods? With our upcoming product, you can detect roughly 15,000 genes per single cell. So stay tuned and sign up at www.lexogen.com slash explore further and you will be the first to know. And with this, I will hand over to Lucas again for the uh, Q&A session. Thank you, Yvonne, for this very insightful presentation. And I'm sure that Trapper has raised a lot of interest. And indeed, there are a couple of questions. But before we turn to them, I also want to point out that there will be another live Q&A session on Thursday, the 8th of October, between 7.30 and 7.50 PM. Central European Summertime, uh, also at the Complex Life of RNA platform. And uh, Yvonne and I will address questions there concerning Trapper and also our spike in uh, product serves, or the long serves. Now, regarding questions, um, the first one I want to pose to um, Yvonne is, uh, what is the yield of a Trapper purification? And what is the best way to QC the RNA extraction? Mm -hmm. That is a very interesting question. So. Um, the yield in terms of uh, concentration largely depends on the input sample type and the small RNA content uh, of this organism, the tissue or the cell type. So this we also have seen in the uh, autoradiographs. It is not unusual that this is in the range of picograms per microliter. So for instance, from uh, 20 milligrams of Arabidopsis plant powder, we obtain a concentration of roughly 50 to 70 picograms per microliter. For platter plasma samples, this is typically even lower. So what we have to keep in mind is that this is highly pure small RNA. So, um, and therefore the yield is absolutely sufficient for small RNA library preps. It is lower than from conventional methods like column-based small RNA extraction kit, but this is mainly due to the fact that Trapper removes the contaminants, the tRNA and rRNA. In terms of QC uh, of these samples, you might uh, yeah, see that with the low concentration range, it would be hard to use the conventional QC methods like uh, microfluidic devices, bioanalyzer or fragment analyzer. These require usually concentrations that are higher than uh, 50 picograms per microliter to be able to detect uh, the RNA. So the best way is to just move on to small RNA library prep straight away and evaluate based on the libraries or NGS data. Alternatively, as we have seen, um, the extraction can also be assessed by northern blotting for known small RNAs. So you can check enrichment there or you can label the complete fraction, for instance, with uh, protein, uh, with PNK, um, and then run them on a gel, do an autoradiograph, and get the similar picture to what we have seen today. Awesome, thank you. Um, the next question is, uh, what are the differences between uh, immunoprecipitation and trapper? Are the different kind of RNAs isolated? Actually not. We will isolate the same kinds of RNAs, but as immunoprecipitation requires specific antibodies for each agle protein, you would um, just fish out one of the agle proteins or one of the agle subtypes, let's say agle 4 or agle 4-like. 
um, whereas with trapper, you will get all ego proteins and all uh, subclasses of ego at the same time. So this will deliver you the complete picture, basically, whereas um, immunoprecipitation will uh, deliver you the picture, the snapshot for each of the individual ego proteins. Okay, thanks a lot. Um, next question is about, um, can Trapper be used instead of microarrays? Um, yeah, that is a good question. Small RNA microarrays uh, are generally quite heavily used for microRNA profiling studies, that's true. However, these uh, arrays, they mostly rely on canonically, uh, canonical evolutionary conserved and highly expressed microRNAs, assuming that the conservation and the abundance are directly related to the physiological function. While this may be true, this also limits the analysis to known and often highly abundant microRNAs. And in contrast, Trapper can be combined with RNA-seq, as we have seen today in the presentation. And thereby, it can also identify low abundant microRNAs. And uh, as the small RNAs are, that are isolated have directly been loaded into risk complexes, these small RNAs are directly linked to a physiological function. So you can detect more, you can detect also unknown small RNA and identify new markers, including isoforms with Trapper and RNA-seq, which is an advantage over the microRNA, uh, microarrays. But in principle, you could also uh, do a trapo um, procedure, a trapo isolation, and use the isolation as the input for the microarray. In this way, you will enrich for functional uh, microRNAs using trapper, and then your readout can be the, the array. And therefore, you will be very, very sure that what you detect and has been pre-selected by trapper will be indeed functional. Okay, so it's like double checking everything. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, okay, next question is, can Trapper be used with bacterial samples? With bacterial samples, no. Um, bacteria do possess proteins that are functional analogs of egos, but uh, these proteins are not evolutionary conserved so or related. Um, they possess different features and may thus not be isolated with trappers. So additionally, um, the regulatory RNAs in bacteria are usually much larger than the small RNAs that are bound with a, from, by ego. And uh, therefore the whole complex will have just very different biophysical properties. And um, it is also expected to, be, to behave differently on the colonies. Yeah. This will be then HFQ and SM-like proteins and so on. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay, next question. Um, can the LO8 be used for protein analysis? Absolutely, yes. Um, the enriched risk fraction after Trapper can be used directly in protein analysis. You can do Western blot on this um, to check who, which egos you have eluted. You can also, again, take the elution fraction apart and basically do an ego immunoprecipitation on the elution fraction. So you can again study the small RNAs grouped by the ego protein that they have been bound to. Mm -hmm. Okay, thanks a lot. Um, next one, is Trapper compatible with uh, other small RNA LIBOR preps? So which type of uh, small RNA LIBOR preps? Um, yes, Trapper is compatible with all small RNA library preps that work by five prime and three prime adapter ligation. So um, basically any adapter ligation protocol can be used um, together with Trapper. Those mm -hmm. are uh, the most common small RNA library preps. Mm -hmm. Okay, awesome. Uh, last question. Um, with which organisms has Trapper been tested already? Um, yes, I mean, most of them we have seen today in a presentation. Um, it was tested with Arabidopsis, also with a few other plants, with uh, yeast like Schizomyces pombe, with worms like C. elegans, mouse, uh, Drosophila, and of course with human samples as well. 
Um, this can be done tissue specific or on the whole organism or cell lines, biofluids, you name it. All kinds of inputs are possible. All right, awesome. So I think we've reached also now the end of the Q&A session. And uh, thanks again, Yvonne, for this uh, really insightful um, uh, webinar and seminar on uh, Trapper. Thanks also to the audience for joining us. And again, if you have uh, more questions, if you think about um, uh, what you can do with Trapper, uh, we are here to answer these questions on uh, Thursday within um, the platform of Complex Life uh, of RNA. Thank you and have a good day. Bye-bye.